it won't really look nice it actually makes it you know depending on what the settings are for the strength uh, glow strength it actually makes it look really good so now that we have a 3d object uh, that we've created that i uh, think didn't look too bad we can now set keyframes which is the most important part in lightwave because without keyframes we couldn't set the positions of a 3d object which in the end uh, once we've rendered it out once we've created that movie will actually give us the animation effect so any keyframes that we set in time basically tells lightwave where an object is supposed to be and any keyframes we haven't set in that time frame Lightwave will generate for us and that's basically the magic part. So with that uh, I'm going to show you how we'll do that. So make sure we've got object selected and then Lightwave. Now in this case we only have one object so that won't be uh, you know too complicated. Make sure you've got modify selected up here in this pane and then we'll go down to rotate. So uh, now you've got you know horizontal, vertical and the uh, left and right rotation. Uh, settings here so you can just say we click on the uh, horizontal line here the red line with the mouse button uh, and then just move the mouse left and right while we're uh, holding down the left mouse button you can see how we're just using the horizontal uh, settings here to change our 3d object so in this case I think uh, this will do nicely just set it here now because we've got auto key set any changes that we do at this specific uh, you know, keyframe in time, Lightwave will actually set it for us. So as soon as we change a value, Lightwave will create it for us. So for example, if we go all the way to the end at 60 frames, um, and then move Lightwave back to here, for example, Lightwave will now have created another keyframe for us. If this auto key wasn't set, we can, do, we can just press the return button once, just make sure everything is correct. We don't want to change any further values. So, yep, it created at 60 frames. Just press the, re uh, the return button or click on OK again, and uh, it will create another one for us. So now, believe it or not, we already have a finished animation. So we've set one at the beginning, how we wanted that wave uh, to look like, and then we've set one at 60 frames per second. So we press on the play button now, we should see a nice animation. Okay, it's not really a nice animation, but you get the idea. So uh, now that we have Lightwave actually moving, we could actually, you know, we're, we're, we're nearly done actually. We just render this out and that's it. We're done, we're finished. We've got our animation going. Obviously this is not really something spectacular. You can also give several envelopes to the textures and colors, which basically works the same way with keyframes, again, which is the most important part about the animation software here. But you can actually set keyframes to anything and everything in Lightwave. So you can change the camera movement, give it a few keyframes, you have the textures, some separate keyframes. I think the best way to demonstrate this is, is if we actually load up a nice sort of space scene and see how that goes. Okay, so here we are, loaded up a nice scene from uh, Star Trek Intrepid that I made. This is actually one of my nice uh, beauty flyby shots. So basically I have the Intrepid class Starship loaded up. I actually have stars loaded up, which you can't see. Like I said, OpenGL doesn't always show you how a scene will actually look like. I've got the three waypoint light set up. Uh, loaded correctly and um, another few things in the background that you can't see just now. You have to actually know how long your scene is going to be because you've got to tell Lightwave uh, how many frames your scene has to have. So if you're using a standard PAL uh, method, so that's, that would be in Europe 25 frames per second, then if you know your film is going to be 10 seconds long, that you would have to use 250 keyframes uh, in that project. Now you can see I'm only, I'm only using 100 keyframes. For me, that's more than enough, and that's already a four second uh, animation. So to set that, double click in here to highlight the number and then set whatever you want. So I've just typed in 250 there, press the OK button or return button. And now as you can see, our scene has some more frames. So if I wanted to, now that that ship's gone past, we can uh, tell it to do something else or we can tell the camera uh, to say this point here to follow the ship. Now obviously that won't really look nice. So we'll set the camera, set the rotation tool. <clears throat> And you, know, you get the idea, the camera's going to uh, move as well. Now, now the camera will move all the time because we've set the camera to, uh, you know, at zero frames, how it's supposed to be, and then move at uh, two, uh, all the way to this position at frame 200. And then it will stop moving after that, as you can see. 
Now you can do the same with lights. So uh, I've, I've put some blinky lights on this ship and there's nothing other than a point light. So we will have a look. Uh, lights, there we go, that's a point light. That's all I've done. Put a few of them around the ship and then you, know, you just have them constantly on. But to make them blink lights, again, what you do is set an envelope and add keyframes. So what we're going to do now is select the lights pane down here and then uh, select a running light and then we'll go to the property settings. Uh, now this is more considered actually a, a lens flare than a light itself but uh, we'll go to lens flare options and then all the way up here to the top you can see the lens flare intensity. Now this for example is where you would actually set the blinking light with an envelope so we'll do that. Uh, this will create a, a separate envelope so we'll uh, have the light uh, go up and down again and then without me having to click all the way up to the end we can just tell it okay so the post behavior would be to oscillate actually you know go up and down or just do a linear repeat so now you can see it's got a linear repeat and that's how the light would go now up you know on and off on and off on and off on and off for example um, now I can't really demonstrate that because I've got so many lights on here um, it's going to be hard to even show you and to do a quick pre-render but that's basically how you would do it and that's uh, the same for anything else a, ch a changing texture for example or the movement of a camera or even a zoom with a camera that's how you would set it up so click on the camera click on the properties and then you would have here you know a lens focal length or the zoom factor and again as you can see you've got the envelope setting and just do the same thing so in this case you could have the camera zoom in and out really quickly uh, for example it would it would look more or less like this ridiculous but again depending on what you want to do you can achieve that uh, uh, goal by you know using this method so uh, let me just set up a, a scene here real quickly so I've got the uh, object selected I've got my Voyager handle now I've got several objects here that belong to the ship but this is actually a null object an object that we can sort of you know use to modify and all the other objects are parented to that so that whatever we set to this object here all the other objects will uh, have the same settings so if I use the rotation for example the rest of the parts belonging to the ship will do the same so they'll stay together and move together along press the return button twice to set a new keyframe at position zero um, I'm just going to get rid of the ones for the camera because that's very distracting at the moment. So uh, either if you press one of these buttons here, it will actually jump to the next keyframe. Now either click on the delete key here or press the uh, delete button on the keyboard and then just confirm that you want to delete it. Right, now we'll select the objects again, make sure that we've got a uh, void handle. Now we've already got some of the keyframes here, so I want to delete those as well back right so that's where the shivers now say after two seconds that would be at 50 frames we want the ship to be slightly rotated even more and down at this position and again you can see like we've already created in the keyframe and it, the keyframes that you can't see here lightwave has already created for us as you can see and there's nothing here because we haven't set another keyframe after that so say at uh, 100 frames we want the ship rotated even more and we want it positioned somewhere over here and again this is what the animation will look like rotated another 90 degrees and actually have it move tightly out of the frame and uh, might actually have the camera move as well although you know this is just to give you a simple idea yeah what we can do we can actually tell the camera so if we go to make sure the camera is selected, go to setup, then to menu options. And now with the camera selected, we're going to tell it to follow a target. And our target will be the Voyager handle. So wherever our object will go, our camera will follow it. As you can see. So we've got it going to 160 frames. Nothing's going to happen after that. So we haven't set anything out there so we can just double, double click on this to highlight again set it to 160 frames and then make sure that it ends there so we press the play button again this is what the animation will look like in real time so we could have more or less the ship powering up if you know what I mean and that doesn't look too bad actually 
Uh, just to have a quick look at what this looks like is hit the F9 button. Again, it depends on what your camera settings and render settings are. This can take a few seconds or a few minutes.